Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy XIV news video. As we're gearing up for patch 4.1, another thing people are always wondering about is quality of life updates. Something that we usually get that we didn't really know that we wanted. Well, on the developer's blog over in Japan, they posted a bunch of quality of life updates that are going to be coming in patch 4.1. Now, I obviously can't read Japanese, although I'm sure by the time I record this video, the English one will be out. Just my luck. Uh, I'll cover what I can remember, but also I do have a Reddit post up, one that actually translated some of the points that isn't just Google Translate, which would work. Technically, I could probably figure it out, but we all know that that uh, Google Translate gets uh, a little weird when you try to do that on these pages. But anyway, let's take a look at some of the screenshots as these are easily the... Uh, the more directly uh, interactable, like I don't, you don't necessarily need language to point out things that are different in the user interface here. So the first one that they actually have highlighted in this first screenshot is the party list. It's not the most major point, but the thing they're trying to point out is that for your chocobo when you have it out, it now shows its remaining time in your actual party list. It's a minor quality of life update for people who use their chocobo. It's good information to have as opposed to needing to go into the menu, but not the biggest quality of life update. Update. However, they do want you to stop for a second and look at something because if you look closely, you'll see that the player that is in the screenshot has both their minion and chocobo out at the same time, something you weren't able to do in the past. Now, keep in mind, this is just when you use the summoned chocobo, not when you're actually on your mount, but it does mean that you can have a minion and your chocobo companion out at the same time as of patch 4.1. Here's another screenshot of one dressed like Lakshmi, one with the Lakshmi minion, and then one with the Lakshmi uh, barding over there on the left. Going into the later screenshot, we can check out some of the party finder changes. Don't forget, custom PvP matches will be available for cross realm in the party finder in 4.1. But more importantly, you're able to make alliances in the party finder in patch 4.1. You're able to set up a party finder for 24 man content. And I actually really like the user interface they have for this right here. You can see that when somebody's creating one for uh, for an alliance, I believe this is for custom matches. This is for custom matches in particular, what you're seeing right here. You're seeing the first team, team of four, the second team, team of four, and then the spectators, which you can have up to eight. So uh, that's what this is right here in particular. If you look on the party finder list though, you can see that it probably looks very similarly for the alliances themselves, where you have these three lines of parties that you can join, alliances A, B, and C and uh, you would just join whichever party you want to join. So I'm glad that they, they got that all in one interface and it looks very, very clean. Um, I definitely plan to be using the Party Finder to try and get as many people into 24-man pre-mades as possible, going into 4.1, so I'm really glad to see this operating uh, pretty well. Another one is Desynth. Now, right now, it's confusing for some people, Desynthesis, for the most part, desynthesis level and how successful you will be desynthesizing something is based on the item level of what you're desynthing. However, there's a bunch of items that are glamour items, particularly, that have higher desynth levels than their basic level. They're usually like a level one item like Expeditioner's Tabard or stuff, and they have something closer to like, I don't know, like 190 or something for their actual desynthesis level. It now displays the desynthesis level at the bottom, so you'll know, hey, this is something I'm within range to desynth. And as you can see right here, uh, checking out the percentage, this one's a, an old, it's an old, old one. It's 120 versus 120, but uh, still serves the, uh, the point of being an example. Going forward, this I don't remember. I'm going to have to look at the translations for what this actually is supposed to be. I could try to translate it to English and see if I can uh, pull from it over here. Proper decomposition skill indicator, yeah. Uh, simultaneously enable, disable activation of content, new element join. Oh, is that the duty action button? Ah, uh, yeah, I think that's what that is. I think that's more specifically the duty action button. So you're able to keybind your duty actions now. That's one of the big things. Uh, you could always keybind your duty actions before, but you can actually place it on your hotbar now and then enable it as such that it actually works that way. Uh, I think that's what it's trying to describe right here in a proper uh, skills decomposition widget. That's what it's called in Japanese where it's trying to explain how the duty actions actually work. Um, but yeah, it looks like that you just have to go into the settings and actually enable it to be on your hotbar in some way. And then you don't, instead of binding your own key to it, you just drag like Vril onto your hotbar 
or something like that. That's that's how I'm pulling. That's the information I'm pulling away. If I actually go to the official translation, it says duty actions now converted to a general action assignable to hot bars. So yeah, that's pretty much the point I'm trying to get across. And the last little thing we see right here at the bottom, and I know there's actually one thing I forgot since we just looked at the Reddit thing, is that uh, you get eight, or at least it looks like up to eight buffs and debuffs on the party list now, as opposed to five. Now that comes with pros and cons. I'd like to be able to manually adjust how many I like to see. Because while seeing up to eight buffs and debuffs seems okay, a lot of that information I don't need, you know, as somebody who's a fellow party member. I don't need to see which buffs and debuffs they have up, unless I'm maybe a healer, in which case the debuffs I need to see usually get pushed to the front of the list anyway. So I'd like to be able to adjust that if possible, but uh, at least it goes up to eight so I can handle more information being displayed on the screen at once. The one I forgot to mention is the one that's actually here at the very beginning. So currently the way the game works is whenever you log into the game, you can set a default uh, chat mode. So like if you have every message by default, you want to be free company chat, you can set it that way. But every time you log out currently, it resets that to say as the default. As of 4.1, if you set it to free company and then you log off, when you log back in, it'll still be set to free company. Party, link shell, whatever it is you want it set to by default, your chat mode will not reset, uh, which is good news. Not something I particularly need, but it's good for a lot of people that use it on a frequent basis. I don't think there's anything else here um, other than, yeah, there was some debate about with whether or not the warrior had inner, inner beast or whatnot. Nothing, no changes about like shake it off or anything on this. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to share those with you. Uh, we're going to be getting more information about 4.1 in just a week. One week's time is live letter number 39. Then one week from then, fingers crossed, we'll be getting preliminary notes and then hopefully we'll have 4.1 on October 10th. But anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned for all the latest Final Fantasy XIV news, videos, guides. You know the drill at this point. Thank you, and until next time, take care.